Hey, I'm Eric Haugen. Check the description box below for information about exactly what sound tools I'm using today and all the links to my website, to my courses, my Patreon, and all that stuff. But hey, here's the thing. Modes aren't just scales, they're progressions too. Let's talk about it. Say we're in the key of C. We know that that's the C major scale, hopefully by now. We know that that gives us the melodies for the key of C. We also know that that gives us the chords for the key of C. C, D minor, well, D minor, E minor, F, G, A minor, and the one that terrifies everybody. B minor 7 flat 5, Philip Seymour Hoffman, don't be afraid of chords that have long names. They're just chords. And so that gives us the melodies for the key of C. And then, you know, some common C chord progressions like, oh, you know, C. You know, any number of, well, that was, yeah, part of Let It Be, or, you know, any of the standard, that's key of C stuff. Here's probably what we maybe hopefully know about modes is that you know, for every one of those notes, if you start on it and end on it again, you're in a mode. So say we're going to start on this G here. That's a mode. That's, that's the fifth mode. That's the Mixolydian mode. Let's just call it the funky major. I think that's, that's, that's a good, good way to deal with it. But not only does that give us a new scale, the, the funky major, it gives us chord progressions too. So that opening example that you heard me play, uh, you know, G, D minor seven, C, is an example of a Mixolydian progression. Because what we got here is if we're going to call this the new tonal center, and yes we are, this is not five anymore, this is now one. That's a one going to a five chord that's minor to a four that's major. So this is one to five minor to four major. Not, it is not five, two, one. Like we're not going to think about it like it's the key of C because we are rotating around this new tonal center. That's the big deal. It's not just about the raw data of, well, here's the notes. So the notes mean this. No, it's what it sounds like. It's what it sounds like and what it feels like. So let's compare this G mixolydian progression, G, D minor 7, to C, to a more standard G major progression. So that would, if this was properly key of G major, this would be G. The D would now be D major. And the C would still be C major. It's pretty cool too, actually. You know, nothing wrong with a major key progression. Back to the, let's make that five minor again. So to really appreciate what's going on here, we got to take a closer look at that D chord. All right. So as in, what are the notes that are actually in the D chord versus a D minor? Hmm. D. So D major chord is D. F sharp, A. D minor is D, F natural, A. Hmm, so the difference is one note. And man, this is so true throughout music that one note, nudge one note, changes everything. And so let's talk about it. That F natural, 
Let's put him over here, third fret. That's also the note that makes Mixolydian Mixolydian. Uh-oh, Uncle Eric has discovered something. So here's the deal. The F natural is a spice note. It's the note that makes it Mixolydian. So that means for a progression to be modal, you need two things, two things happening. It needs to be rotating around that new tonal center, the modal tonal center, if we want to call it that. And it needs a chord in there that contains the special note also. That like, you know, if the note that makes Mixolydian sound Mixolydian is that F natural, well then we need chord, we need a chord that would have that. And so that's why G, is a modal progression. And that's so, that's such a big deal because I know what happens with modes. I was taught them by a shredder using the three notes per string system. He didn't tell me this. He was just like, dude, check it out. Look what you can do. And I didn't, it took me a long time to realize, oh, there's a context. They have to exist in a context for it to sound right. Um, let's just look at a couple of other examples, you know, if, if we're in G, we're just going to deal with one mode today because I don't want, you know, people's heads to explode. We're just dealing with G Mixolydian. All right, I'm rotating around G. What's another? Oh, Broadway. They say the lights are on Broadway. Yeah. Because that's just G going back and forth to F. So yeah, we can we can bet that that F note is in the F chord. That's a Mixolydian progression. Which, uh-oh, that means Bob Seger's Night Moves. That's Mixolydian. Another one that comes to mind, uh, Richard and Linda Thompson, the Calvary Cross, because that's G. Drop down to F, A minor. Drop it. One last one that contains quite a few. Neil Young, Cinnamon Girl. It's not in G Mixolydian, but let's see. G to D minor, F to C. So, you know, if I was analyzing that, I'd be like, oh, that's one, not five. We're, this is the new tonal center. D minor, that's the five minor. The flat seven chord, the F, and then the C, not one. It's not one. It's not one, it's four. So let's repeat, repeat after me. For a progression to be modal, it has to contain the special modal spice note that defines that mode, and that, that would be hiding inside the chord as well as the melody, and it has to rotate around that new tonal center. If you string too many chords together, it won't sound like a mode anymore. It'll just sound like the original key. I'm going to say that again. If the progression is too long and has too many chords, it's going to sound like the original key from which it came. Nothing wrong with that. It's just not a mode anymore. Like if I was like G, D minor, F, E minor, C. It gets, it gets, it muddies the water. So it is really true that, that for every mode, this is true, that like, there are these simple little progressions that, that rotate around whatever that new tonal center is, and they contain the spice note. That's all it is. And that's so cool for songwriting and riff writing and things like that. You know, that there's Dorian progressions, there's Lydian progressions, there's Mixolydian progressions. 
et cetera, as the only ones that I don't think really exist as an appendix of the system is, you know, the, the one built off of the... I mean, unless you're Primus, I don't know if you're going to be writing a song that starts on a B minor 7 flat 5. trouble hearing a melody that would that would pop on top of that that's all i got for today thanks so much to everybody who supports me in all the ways that you do even if it's just clicking like and subscribe it keeps me in business with the algorithm relevancy as bill and ted would say be excellent to each other that includes yourself happy friday eat pizza go to my website to book lessons with me support me on patreon or buy my courses that's all mm -hmm.